Please state your name for the record. Daniel Ocean. Roll credit. Oh, wait. Oops. Guess I jumped the gun there a bit. I mean, the spirit of the sin is still covered by this movie moment, but technically premature celebration on my part, you might say. The purpose of this hearing is to determine whether, if released, you are likely to break the law again. George Clooney begins the movie by being paroled and immediately hatches a criminal plan cliche. Also, I know this is a prison and all, but the f*** is this room? Is there a law that mandates they hold these hearings in what looks like a set from the Saw franchise? While this was your first conviction, you have been implicated, though never charged, in over a dozen other confidence schemes and frauds. ex paroles position! Is it likely you'd fall back into a similar pattern? She already left me once. I don't think she'd do it again just for kicks. Look, the only reason Danny's getting paroled here is because he's George Clooney. Not only did he not answer the question, this is a pretty dickish thing to say to a parole board. I mean, even Red had a better rapport in Shawshank. Clooney is the only DC film star here. Marvel has represented out the ass. Topher Grace from Spider-Man 3, Don Cheadle from the MCU, Matt Damon from Thor Ragnarok, Brad Pitt from a movie I'm not comfortable naming just yet, given the date of this video's release, but for DC, just Clooney here. Marvel is even winning the Ocean's Casting Wars. How are you, sir? Hello, Frank. Why doesn't Frank recognize Danny until he calls him by name? Not only does he know who he is, he knows his entire situation. You seen him? Last I heard he was teaching movie stars how to play cards. Danny and Frank play the pronoun game for some reason. Even though we know this movie's already gone on way too long without Brad Pitting. No, sir. I wouldn't even think about leaving the state. And the rest of the movie will happen without a single parole officer calling or showing up to ask questions. And thus begins the annoying habit of Rusty eating and or drinking something in nearly every scene he's in. Seriously, that motherfucker should be 300 pounds by the end of this movie. This teaching Hollywood peeps how to poker scene is hilariously dated. He's teaching Topher Grace, Shane West, the least famous charmed girl, Seventh Heaven Guy, and Joshua Jackson. Maybe, just maybe, your references would have lasted longer if you'd chosen film actors instead of TV actors. Or just avoided the goddamn WB's early TV slate. Also, Topher Topher Grace in a movie with too many villains, movie sucks. Topher Grace in a movie with too many hunks, works every time. You can't have three pairs. You can't have six cards in a five Follow card me. game. Yeah, but that's pretty much on Rusty here. He didn't notice the missed deal that gave Shane the extra card. Given how clueless these assholes are, sure does seem like Rusty's a shitty teacher. I will see your 500, and I will raise you another 500. String betting. Holly? This opening Hollywood bullshit goes on for way too long. New York's hottest club is deep. Its keyhole logo icon is only half the unlockable treasure waiting within this hot spot that merges lust, danger, and ambivalence. Also, the f is up with Club Boob back there. Sounds like a much better place for a poker tutorial. <laughs> this little gag about Topher Grace being swarmed by fans as Brad Pitt and George Clooney casually walk by has always made me giggle. Once and off. You want to knock over a casino? I know they're tucked away in a booth, but there are people around them in this restaurant. They couldn't have talked about this extremely illegal plan in the car, or even in the parking lot, safely out of earshot. A Boski, a Jim Brown, a Miss Daisy, two Jethros, and Leon Spinks. Not to mention the biggest Ella Fitzgerald ever. Whoa, that's racist? Honestly, I'm not sure. So I guess I'll send this ridiculous heisty code speak that's sprinkled in all these f***ing movies. Hey, Oscar, lower it a bit, would you? Sorry. What Oscar should be sorry about is using a flashlight to cause the first of many unnecessary fakeouts in this brightly lit room. Jesus, the level of handsome in this movie is off the charts. You'd think it'd be enough to remove a sin, but this movie is too f***ing handsome. You know the three most successful robberies in the history of Vegas? They most assuredly do know this, but we'll be treated with an expositional flashback just to bring this point home. And the closest any man has ever come to robbing a Las Vegas Casino. Seriously, the most successful attempts at Vegas robbery have involved people running through the casino with huge amounts of cash in plain f***ing sight. Just out of curiosity, which casinos did you geniuses pick to rob? Wait, hold up. The actual casinos in question weren't revealed when they told him the plan? That's bad enough on its own. But when you factor in that this guy f***ing hates the dude that owns the three casinos they eventually name, it's even worse. In real life, these fools would have started with Terry Benedict sucks. Somehow, when crafting this all-star cast for the Casino Heist reboot film, they still ended up with Casey Affleck and Scott Kahn in this movie, proving that the power of nepotism still beats the power of most anything else in Hollywood. Brothers. How are his nerves? Okay. Not so bad you notice. The way this old-timey phrase is shoehorned into Rusty's dialogue, I'm expecting the rest of his lines to be peppered with a few 23 skidoos, at least a couple of horse feathers, and one pangwangle. Go find Greg's tell him I need to see him. Oh. Just find him, will ya? Of all the times I could say this works in this movie, this is the this worksiest. Everybody down! Get it! Did Basher know for sure that no one was gonna be in that car, or is he okay with casual homicide? <laughs> Cirque de okay. Which one's the amazing Yen? The little Chinese guy. That's racist. The director said, let's have you carve up an orange in this scene so that you can be unique and edgy, but still not so much of an asshole that the viewers can't relate to you. So are you gonna treat me like a grown-up at least? Tell me what the scam is? 
Dog track races are not this loud, especially since we heard everything they said up until now quite clearly. You want to keep me in the dark? Just f***ing cut away. Jesus, you dick. You think we need one more? You think we need one more? Yeah, but that one more is f***ing Matt Damon, who's apparently the best thief on the planet, right? This is phrased as an afterthought, but he would have been a huge part of the plan from the beginning. In case you confused it with Chicago, California. I don't doubt that Will Hunting's a great thief, but what kind of jagoff keeps his wallet in this location on a crowded train? Despite being Super Thief Matt Damon, Super Thief Matt Damon doesn't notice the obvious theft from his own pocket. This f***er has had this printed for years and keeps it in a safety deposit box or some there's no way he's had time to get them printed since leaving jail. Well, you're pretty trusting pretty fast. Can you get the check, please? That's the best lift I've seen you make yet. The f You mean even better than that super quick theft of the wallet on the train? He looked away from the table and even lifted his f***ing hand. A little less conversation, a little more action, please. This movie has entirely too much drone footage porn. What, did you guys get a group rate or something? <laughs> but no, seriously, did you? This is a great question, considering that even though they're coming from all over the country, these assholes arrive at exactly the same time. Gentlemen, the 3000 block of Las Vegas Boulevard, otherwise known as the Bellagio, the Mirage, and the MGM Grand. For a movie specifically about Las Vegas, this is really obscuring the geography. Not only are all three of these casinos actually separated by several other casinos, they're not really on the same block. This is like saying the Upper West Side of Manhattan, otherwise known as Central Park, and the Dakota. This place houses a security system that rivals most nuclear missile silos. This says more about missile silos than it does this casino. No, tunneling is out. Their sensors monitoring the ground a hundred yards in every direction. I'll buy that Rusty's able to understand Chinese, but how does Yen understand him perfectly when he speaks English only once during the movie? Okay, Ruben's already been set up as a legend as a character. Do we really need this shot of him in real life smoking while standing next to the frame Time Magazine cover portrait of him smoking? You'd probably be less conspicuous with a cart that had the word inconspicuous written all over it. This is Las Vegas. What Las Vegas strip club has tape crosses covering the nipples? And who goes to them? Thanks, Charmaine. Try to your mom for me. Har har movie, but we just saw Frank spying on the dude that's in love with Charmaine and having to write it down. So how the shit does Rusty know her f***ing mom? Computer nerd genius god guy is so stupid he can't remember a simple path without a map drawn on his hand. Also, this hand map situation turns out to be a big deal when Livingston is leaving. But he was just wearing gloves, right? It should have already sweated off. Why didn't he draw this on the glove? Excuse me! This extended chasing down a guy and it seems nefarious, but it's actually innocent because he's only returning something you lost and isn't a killer sh was done much better in Joyride, which came out three months before this. I might be able to drop that down to say seven, sixteen uh, each. Frank literally strong arms this poor bastard into taking 2,500 off of each van, even though the Ocean's crew could surely afford them. Remind me why we're rooting for these guys again? It's imported silk, so. Man, for the ringleader of this operation, Danny sure does sit around doing jack a lot during the first half of this movie. This fictional foreign better shtick includes Matrix agents as his bag carriers. And it's definitely fun to laugh at them in this get up. Smiley emoji. Good evening, sir. How are you, Frank? How's the time? What do they talk about? All business. But he just asked about Frank's family. Jesus, this movie contradicts the shit out of itself. You scared? You suicidal? Sounds like Linus needs his security blanket. Now comes a girl. Where's she come from? Museum up there. She's a curator. I'm reasonably sure that no matter your references, you can never get a job as an art gallery curator if you've previously dated a known incarcerated art thief. This is just the best part of my day. Expositional upskirting. Actually, I haven't even caught her name. Tess. Linus knows everything about Terry at this point, and knows that Tess is the museum curator, but he didn't catch her name just so we can have this reveal. In recreating Andy Garcia's underground vault, these guys decided that meant a chip for a chip, which is a level of realism even Quentin Tarantino would spit on the face of. Wait, they're building this mock-up right across the street from the Bellagio? And the door is wide f***ing open? How would they not had someone wander in here even by accident? And remember, Tess does not split 11 ways. I mean, isn't it just a matter of deciding who goes first? Everything goes to plan. And I won't be the one that has to make that choice. So wait, you f***ers conveniently drew up a plan ahead of time that involved Ocean getting fake arrested and fake beat up by a dude on his payroll before anyone found out the casino owner is currently f***ing Ocean's ex-wife. Do I have that right? Because that is literally the least believable thing in this movie, which is saying a hell of a lot. You like it. I like that you like it. Honestly, if I were her, this would be a relationship ender. This is the kind of answer given by a boyfriend who thinks his job is to compliment his lady, as opposed to a boyfriend that is just being honest and happening to often agree with and compliment the lady as an offshoot of that. I'll see you tonight. In my hotels, there's always somebody watching. Then won't they be watching when you two meet up tonight? Like, is it a f***ing secret that they're dating? Also, why hasn't she dumped him yet? Is she waiting for someone to rob him and jolt her into realizing he's a terrible douche nozzle of a boyfriend? He owns all this 
but he won't kiss her because some jabroni watching a security monitor might see it. Here's the scene where Danny reveals himself to Tess, because he needs her casino-owning boyfriend to get suspicious and have him citizen arrested later during the climax, which was part of the plan before anyone found out Tess was even here, which makes this a paradox worse than the whole of the movie Looper. Now they tell me that I paid my debt to society. Funny I never got a check. Boy, sometimes the dialogue really threatens to outsmart itself in this movie. Who the hell talks like this? I had to leave New York to get away from what happened. Even more reason why your high-profile employment here in Las Vegas is so shocking. Do you remember what I said to you when we first met? You said that I better know what I'm doing. So many questions here. Was that the only thing she said to him when they met? Why would she even say this, unless they, like, went tandem skydiving or something? Who says this to someone they just met? Why the hell is the dialogue in this scene so goddamn clunky? Jeez, it's like Terry gets his entire wardrobe directly handed down from Disney villains. This shot of Clooney and Damon being the only ones not to turn around to look at the building implosion is awesome. Steven Soderbergh doesn't have a perfect batting average, but when he's on his game, it's badass. They've only nosed up the mainframe couplet, nosed it right up! I guess Don Cheadle heard this was an ensemble piece and figured it was a Guy Ritchie movie. I have no other explanation for this abominable accent. But hang on a minute, hang on. <laughs> We could use a pinch. This guy just slogged all the way here, drenched in sewage, to tell the gang the problem, and then immediately comes up with a solution. He's like a deuce ex machina. How does a facility holding the world's largest EMP bomb not have any gate security? This shit's less guarded than the neighborhood Bieber lives in. Where are you going? No. For no reason at all, Danny decides to stiff-arm Matt Damon's character, a guy he flew all the way to goddamn Chicago to recruit for this mission, because he suddenly needs someone to treat like an intern or some sh**. But really, it's just so Damon can disobey here, create a minor action moment, and so more fake dissension between them that is here only to serve that whole inexplicable, no one on the team knows Danny's arrest is fake bull later. Here's where you have to blame Damon's character, though, because even if he had to leave the van to escape the brother's annoying, and he did, he still could have just gotten out and stood there outside the van. He didn't have to run into the building three minutes late to the heist. Any idea how this happened? Oh, come on. He's been chasing Benedict's girl. Hulk about to rage! This is not your call. When you put her before us, you made it mine. This is all an act, and I'm just gonna tack on 15 sins to this movie for this overly complicated, I'm not even sure it was ultimately needed, Danny loves Tess Ruse. Even though she's an art curator, I still feel like this film represents the saddest possible outcome for the gal Julia played in Pretty Woman. What are you thinking about? You. Man, this movie wastes its only female character so hard that it spawned a whole unnecessary gender-swapped reboot. Don't touch your tie, look at me. If you're this nervous about his ability to do the role, just don't let Danny confront Tess in the restaurant earlier in the movie. That was on purpose, and everyone knows it. So this can-the-replacement guy handle it bullshit is just a waste of time. And for God's sake, whatever you do, don't, under any circumstance. Russ. Despite Rusty not imparting the most important bit of advice he could give Linus, his performance goes off without a hitch. Sure, I bet the fight's gonna be exciting, but it's nothing compared to that upcoming Rick Springfield show. So, so, it's me! Movie goes full Donnie Brasco here and has no shame about it. Lift them up, please. Sure, even though I know you as an arms dealer and those stones are possible explosives, I feel like this hands-only wipe down is sufficient for something that's going in my precious vault that's also holding $160 million. Why does the EMP device run on Mountain Dew? Or is that mellow yellow? You ready? What the hell is this super gauzy bullshit bandage? If Yen's hand is broken from the van door collision, then he should have some sort of brace. At least ace bandage that shit. This stuff is guaranteed to be caught up in the vault door. Mr. Benedict. Hi, Sheldon Willis. Nevada Gaming Commission. Even more anger builds up inside me as I realize the role they are claiming was originally Clooney's, but Damon is last minute filling in for directly interacts with Benedict, who would definitely know Danny Ocean on f***ing sight. Christ, the whole Danny recognized, arrested, replaced, whatever shit's flimsy shit and needs to be publicly flogged. And no one ever found these empty uniforms or reported them to anyone. The end. Mr. Ocean, mm -hmm. Mr. Benedict would like to see you. These thugs have been following Danny since the slot area, but only stepped in to grab him after he's publicly manhandled and kissed Terry's girlfriend. You definitely won't let me deal the cars. You might as well call it White Jack. God, I miss Bernie Mac. See, pickpocketing is tough to show on film, since it should be invisible. But a movie has to slow that down so you can realize you're watching a pickpocketing. But still, this is too obvious for me not to sin it. Next time, just remember the card. We won't run into yeah, this again. Sorry. Why didn't they have the card again? This plan has everything at every moment, except right here with this one card. Don't ever do what you did tonight again. But other than that rebuke, I'm probably not serious enough to follow up on any of this. In fact, you'll be back in your room in my hotel in a matter of minutes. Do these guys seriously need to outsource their muscle? And how did Danny know Terry would specifically get Mr. Clean to beat his ass? Bruiser, not until later. Sorry, Danny, I, I forgot. Even though the guys outside will easily hear Bruiser fake fight Danny later on, they don't hear anything said here. Uh, rusty, the whole argument? Oh, come on. You know, why don't you just tell me? Why, why did you put me through all this? This is ultimately the movie's explanation for all the f**kery regarding who knew Danny was going to be arrested and who didn't, and it's unsatisfactory as hell. James Bond much? Movie that stars Batman and Bourne? Cut it! 
Phew, they made it. The joy I feel in my heart almost makes me forget that the drop lines are still dangling from above and would surely be setting off the sensors that are back online now. Ah, I didn't realize that boxers were taught to immediately abandon their training in the case of a power failure and start flailing madly at their opponents when the lights come back on. The lights were off for 30 seconds, right? I know humans are awful, but would they start immediately rioting, even when the power was restored? Thankfully, not Batman George Clooney somehow still has access to hockey puck knockout bombs. Even though a gas strong enough to knock two grown men out was just deployed, two other grown men are about to walk into its proximity with no effects. This has all been too easy. I think we need to saddle the heroes with a last minute weird delay event. What the f you bet? What's Yen so angry about again? Did he want them to blow the door out earlier and kill him? Other than that, they're exactly on schedule. It's almost like the script wanted this little Chinese dude to say f**k and went from there. I don't have a cell phone. 2018 hipsterdom. Man, the Bellagio must be much smaller than I remember, since Tess finds Rusty immediately after leaving the monitor room. Also, all those riots at the tables, uh, I guess they just resolved themselves. I mean, deep down, people are good. Where's Danny? Danny's fine, he's in good form. He requests that you go upstairs and watch TV. He asks that because he set up a whammy of a TV show to prove to her that Andy Garcia is a dickhole, but she shouldn't need video proof of that, and everyone knows it, and it's the worst kept secret in this movie. Cutting power now. Even though this is dummy footage that was shot yesterday, it perfectly syncs up to Terry cutting the power at the hotel. It's magic, I tells you. Tires. Tires. Oh, sure. The one time the bad guys actually aim at the tires, the van's not even moving. Also, casual gunfire at an extremely busy airport is extremely casual. They say the bags were filled with flyers, sir. For hookers. Yep, all those flyers for hookers that were somehow already hanging out in the Bellagio vault alongside the 160 million, even though there's no way that they could have made it into those bags. Make the call. Holy sh**, did they intercept and divert all the 911 calls during this time frame? They probably just killed a lot of Vegas. Turn to channel 88. Who is this? Jesus, I think Tess's only character trait is do whatever the men tell you to do. I'll find out who took your money. You know a guy. Show Mr. Ocean the exit. After being positive that Danny had a role in this robbery, Terry immediately dismisses his offer for help, because plot. How long will you be? Well, let's wait and see what the box office does on this one, eh? Look, I like this scene and I love the music, but uh, this shit takes so long it may as well have been directed by Peter Jackson. I stopped and picked up your personal effects. Hope you don't mind. Holy sh! Now the movie's openly referring to Tess as fing property. Fine, gender swap the reboot. This movie's definitely earned it. You think we need one more? You think we need one more? What the hell? It's only pocket change, right? <laughs> we are laughing! <laughs> Two. And in my club, I will splash the pot whenever the f I please. Don't say anything yet. I don't think it works for somebody else. You know, Gary and Celeste, what do they know about anything? Well, this is your game I've never played before. It's not a game. It's not something you play. Well, does this make any sense to you? It doesn't have to. What's a pinch? Punch, punch. Not pinch. What did I say? I said pinch. Next time, Gadget, I'll get you. I mean, I learned my lesson. I can honestly say it. I'm a changed man. Please, no gang signs. No, throw it up. I'm kidding. But it looks like a giant dick. Hey, George, the ocean call. They're running out of shrimp. My name is Lyman Zerga. His name.